And now, the low post. Welcome to a joint low post hoop collective with Brian Windhorst podcast after game one of the NBA final. No, this was not the <laughs> NBA finals. This was just game one of the NBA season, uh, excluding the Toronto Raptors, defending champion Toronto Raptors ring celebration. Uh, in Staples Center, the Clippers beat the Lakers by some score that I 10, already they beat forgot. Them by 10. Um, a strange game, a clunky Why? game. Why was it strange? Well, it's cl- a little clunky. The Lakers offense, I think the story, the bigger story, the biggest takeaway will be it looked a little clunky, right? Don't you think? Like, there, I can, you already can hear people saying, why didn't LeBron and AD run more pick and roll? So many post ups for AD. That's going to be the story, I think. Can, um, can a game be considered valid if Alex Caruso does not play in it for the Lakers? I, you know, I, I, I found that confusing. I, I mean, honestly. forget it. Well, he was, he has a bone bruise, but, um, I felt like LeBron was almost like a quarterback who has a favorite receiver. He was so laser focused on Anthony Davis. I don't know if um, if the stats. Uh, what's the specialty stats? Um, I'm on East Coast time. What's the spectrum? Not spectrum. Second spectrum. Second spectrum. Second spectrum. Did they track how many passes? Probably LeBron targets because I feel like. He threw Anthony Davis probably 20 to 30 passes tonight, and he probably wanted to throw him a lot more. And I'm sure that's partially the game plan, but I think it just really cements home to me. He really wants Anthony Davis to be the hub of the offense, and he may be willing to have some clunkers early on to establish Anthony Davis in that role. Well, part of it, I think, is symptomatic of they don't quite know what to do when Anthony Davis is at the floor and Dwight and JaVale are on the floor. Because if they run pick and roll, it's a little easier to switch LeBron AD pick and rolls. And there's someone in the dunker spot all the time. And so they sort of compromise by saying, all right, we'll just give him the ball on the post because that way he can finish before the help comes from that guy in the dunker spot or we'll figure something else out. It was a weird and then when LeBron was off the floor and AD was on the floor, which is when they made their big run in the third quarter and Danny Green went crazy but a lot of that was just AD in the post again because they don't have any playmaking guards that can get they him also loose were getting the pick and roll. Stops. They were getting stops in that run. That's true. Um, I thought just in general LeBron looked like a player who hadn't played a real game in a long time. Um I don't necessarily think it was rusty. I think his instincts were a little bit off. I thought there were times when he could have attacked and didn't. I thought there were times when I thought he would finish and he, and he didn't. He did have that power dunk, which showed that his, his health. And that he, had, he had a rumbling, spinning, bully layup yeah. late in the game. But then he had another one of those that he missed at point blank range. And then he got stripped on the next possession. You're like, ooh, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, he... He what he was fine tonight. He wasn't great. Um, I did like that the Lakers hit thirteen threes. Um, thirteen of thirty three. Um, they don't. They didn't hit thirteen threes that often last year. Although Danny Green had like probably what will be his best shooting night of the season. That he made, he made a couple off the dribble jumpers too. Danny Green was getting a little frisky out there. He was ter- he was terrific. Um, Danny Green's a good basketball player. He's a, just a really good winning basketball player. I think the Lakers are going to win a lot of games. I think that they're a – I keep saying I think they're a player and a half short, and I don't know where they get that player and a half. They really, really need Andre Iguodala. I think the Clippers are fantastic. Well, you could see the need for another playmaker, right? I mean, that's part of why Anthony Davis had to do so much work. And by the way, it didn't look pretty, and everyone's going to criticize it. Anthony Davis had 25 points on 21 field goal attempts. It's not great, but 14 free throws is very nice. Five assists is very nice. Like, he, missed I don't think, he missed a lot of free throws. I don't think that was the problem. Um, and you also, you know, if LeBron is just not going to guard people, uh, I mean, you saw them use Anthony Davis on Kawhi late in the game, with, which was interesting. But when Danny Green was not on Kawhi, like – the idea that Contavious Caldwell Pope can handle these kind of matchups is over after one game. Well, I, Kawhi, KCP on Kawhi, it might as well have been me. Well, that's unfair. I mean, there's no, not but that they, many. Questions. They talked it up privately, and 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 I don't know how much publicly, but they said, you know, we're going to try him on these kind of assignments. Well, they tried, and it's not going to work. Well, when they went on that 15-0 run to tie the game, LeBron was not in the game, and I'd have to go back and watch the film, but. They were playing good defense in that spot. You know, I, I wrote a story today. It was on ESPN about how 
if the Lakers are going to play like this, where they're going to play with traditional centers, and I know that they may not do that in a, in a playoff setting, but if they're going to do it during the regular season, and they're going to play big, and they're going to they're going to drop their guys on pick and rolls a couple times tonight. By the way, Lou Williams would come off screens, Dwight or Javale would would be in drop, and he would just pull up from sixteen feet and hit it. If they're going to play that way. It really puts a lot of pressure on the forwards to scramble on defense. And that's a lot of pressure on LeBron. And I don't know, you know, I, I don't know if he can do it. And maybe, maybe you can make the case that he shouldn't be doing it, you know, during the regular season. But that's the strategy that Frank Vogel's playing. Well, and, and a guy that I'm interested to see what he can give them on defense that didn't play tonight and we haven't mentioned is Kuzma. No one thinks of Kuzma as a defense player. He has not been a defensive player, but. He is going to have to contribute some of those minutes guarding these bigger wing types that they're going to run into. He's got really good size, and so what what I think is going to happen a lot is because they're not going to switch. At least Vogel doesn't want to switch. The guy will come off. The center will step up, which those guys are terrific. You know, JaVale and Dwight should be able to defend in that spot. But then this floor is going to be stretched. And so the forward position, the forwards who are playing sort of below the free throw line are going to have to come and help the center, help the helper, and then they're going to have to recover out to the corners. But see, the whole point of playing that way is that you don't have to rotate so much. That's ideally you play, you drop your centers back like that, like Gobert in Utah but so you also, everyone else you can stay don't home. Switch. So, so that you can you can pressure the the the, the either you can go over a screen right. and pressure the the uh, the perimeter. Right, but I'm saying the guys that are on the shooters should be able to stay home. If you're going to play Dwight at the rim, your guys on the wing shooters should be able to stay home because Dwight's at the rim. You should be able to play two on okay. two. All right. That's the goal instead well, of three on two. Right. Um, do you want to know who played? Guess who played the most minutes in the game tonight? Montrez. Yes. Yeah. On one guess, you got it. 38 I, minutes for Montrez Harrell. I thought he, I mean, Lou and Montrez tonight, like, you know, the Lakers got up about 10, 9 or 10 early on. And when they brought in those two guys off the bench, they ran a couple of pick and rolls for baskets. And it was like everybody calmed down. Harrell changed the game with his energy rolling to the basket. He had four assists, which is a lot for him. It's a lot for any center, but it's a lot for him. Um, mostly kicking out on, on the roll. They make 14 million combined. Huh? Yeah, I know it's amazing. I mean, um, Mo Harkless and, and, makes and, eleven million, and Harold is one of the guys who watched what happened yesterday with all the extensions. Is like, oh baby. Yeah, the thing about him, the reason he's so valuable, I think, is because he can guard any small ball. Well, just about any small ball center. You lose nothing with him as a, guarding the small ball center. Well, so here's what I would be very encouraged by tonight if I were the Clippers, other than Kawhi going nuts for a stretch in the game. Um, a, you won without Paul George. B, Harrell, we just talked about, 17 points plus 15. Jamichael Green attempts seven threes in 19 minutes and makes four of them. Maurice Harkless, 10 points in 29 minutes. Plays looks good. Plays looks really good. good defense. Poked the ball away from AD under the rim on a switch. And that kind of switch, like, so they have a question. Who are they going to start when Paul George comes back? And the debate is going to be, do you go big and go like Beverly, George, Kawhi, Jamichael Green, or Maurice Harkless, and then a center. Or do you go small and put Shamit, and Kawhi plays the four? I think the Clippers want to go big and will go big. And if Harkless and Green can give them the kind of minutes they gave them tonight, and they can switch, particularly like Harkless did tonight, Beverly, Kawhi, Le- uh, George, Harkless, and a center is just going to be, if it's Harold, it's even more switchable. That is going to be. Such a pain in the ass to score against. I'm already and sweating. And then they have, they will have arguably the best bench in the league. And the bench killed the Lakers today. Now, and you know, if they move, you know, Shamit comes off the bench, that even gives more firepower off the bench. Yeah, Shamit, I th- I, my guess is that Shamit comes off the bench and they end up starting that bigger lineup. But, and Harkless ends up, if he can give them something, and he's just not one of those guys you can trust for a full season, right? He's going to have troughs of lack of productivity, whereas his motor, Portland would tell you they had to kind of kick him in the ass every once in a while to get him to play. But if those guys give them minutes, 
mean, this is why Iguodala is such a sexy acquisition for them is that they feel he's another switchable guy. But, like, the so way those guys what, played tonight was really encouraging. Yeah, I mean, what would that trade be, though? I think, that's a, be, I think that's a buyout. I but, think. but they could off, They could trade. They sure. have pieces. They have pieces. But, okay, so one of the things that happened tonight that I um, just shook my head at was uh, Kawhi scoring in, like, a turnaround situation against AD. Um, Kawhi, he's, I don't know if he's quite at Dirk level, but because he can hold the ball so high above his head and have a launch angle that's so high, he's, you could almost not bother him. And I don't know if that, is that just like, is that wrist strength? Is it forearm strength that he can hold the ball that high, but then also get so much torque? To launch the ball, I mean, it's it's a simple play, it's a simple move, but it's just devastating. Well, I don't know anyone in the league that goes from sort of like hunched over, shoulders down, shoulders in your te- chest, driving to straight up and down like he's on a pogo stick. Yeah, as your as the defender just keeps falling backwards because Kawhi is so strong. Um, yeah, he's he's a monster. He was he was as advertised. He had a couple spectacular defensive plays. Six turnovers wasn't great, but. Um, Clippers looked. The Clippers looked good. The Lakers, you know, they're going to get hammered uh, based on this performance, and and it will be an overreaction. But you know, it wasn't. It 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 was a little clunky. I am thought. I am I just inside my own bubble? Like, did people think that the Lakers were like going to win by a lot of points tonight? No, but I, I did, think people, did, did people thought think with that? without Paul George playing, the Lakers I mean, should be favored to win the game. I don't know what the Vegas line was, but. Lakers favored by three and a half. I, I don't think you can look at. I don't think you can ever look at a Vegas line when it comes to the Lakers because it's so weighted on the Laker fan betting it. Um, what did you think of how how did the um, the Clippers played about the la- or the Lakers played about the last eight minutes of the game and the last three and a half minutes of the first half with AD at center? How do you think that looked? Well, I think that's the way they should they should play. Um, I think they. I think they need an extra. I think they're going to need an extra, some sort of perimeter player out there. I think. I think that's where they're where they're better. But they also had. Well, we 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 should we should mention another guy who didn't play tonight was Rajon Rondo. Well, how helpful he is playing next to LeBron is TBD. He will be very helpful, I think, or Caruso would be one of them yeah, Quinn playing Cook, the minutes when LeBron is not Quinn, playing. Too many Quinn Cook minutes tonight. Yeah. Um, but in that late second quarter run when AD played center was maybe the only time in the game when LeBron and AD got in a little bit of a rhythm running pick and roll. They got a bunch of switches, and AD just went down into the post against Harkless and other guys and just roasted them. And ones, fouls, he lived at the foul line. It's like it, this is just going to be everyone wants to, you know, there has been a lot made of, AD not wanting to play center and how the Lakers are going to navigate that problem. Some people would say too much has been made about that. I don't think too much has been made about that. I think that's going to be a big story the whole season. Also, there was a stretch in the first half. I don't think he did in the second half where Frank Vogel took both AD and LeBron off the floor. Yeah, at the that's same not going to happen a lot. Yeah, I, I, I think that'll get smoothed out. Um, um, ultimately, if you're a Laker fan, what you've got to be saying is this. No Kyle Kuzma. And LeBron's going to play better than this. this LeBron not, will play better. You know, if you're a Clippers fan tonight, you're saying, "Oh my God, cancel all plans for May and June." Right? That's what you're saying. If you're these two teams, May. How about June? I just said May and June. Oh, May and June. Yeah. Can I give you a couple of fun bloopers for the night? <laughs> yeah. Landry Shamit, bless his heart, got the ball in half court in transition with LeBron bearing down on him. And thought, you know what? Yeah, that was a bad decision. I'm re- no, he, but you know, he thought maybe Le- LeBron's almost thirty-five. A lot of minutes. I'm where Andre Iguodala failed. I am going for I Landry Shamit. Am going for it, and it did not work out for him. Okay. All right, we on the way. Can I give you my second nice blue? There, Paul time. George just walked by us. He wore a tuxedo tonight. He's not going to come on the podcast. I no. don't think. Um. Can I give you my second blooper? By the way, he he was wearing a bow tie tonight. I saw. And Steve Ballmer was wearing a shirt that with the elbow was torn out. 
Okay. How how do you how do you That's cool. How do you That's really cool. <laughs> how about this? Come on. So how do you tear your elbow out? Probably by doing stuff like pumping your fist and saying that's cool, really well, he, exuberantly. He does like pump his fist up and down, but like I, I would think he'd be ripping out his shirt tail or like popping a button. How do you tear your elbow? Is it possible that he was wearing a shirt that was so old that it was just weak at the elbow that it tore? I hope so. Because if you're going to go buy bloopers, the Steve Ballmer torn Torture. elbow. I have to go see it. I did not know. And by the that. way, it was not a small hole. His whole elbow was sticking out of it. Um, okay, back to your bloopers. My second blooper was uh, Dwight Howard's first appearance of the season resulted in a delay of game because it took him so long to untape the ice packs on his knees. <laughs> so it was literally, he I hadn't even gotten say, into the I game. I thought you were going to say the morning. braids in his hair. It's a very, there's a lot going on on top of that. No, head. the hair is fine. He's had the hair for a while. I'm just saying, he literally, he was taking, it was like a mummy trying to unwrap himself, and the refs finally were like, dude, we gave you enough time. De- delay, <laughs> delay of game warning. Uh, delay also, of game was warning. the was the was the subject of the first ever challenge. I don't know if there was a challenge in the Raptors game. Uh, there was a challenge in the Raptors okay. game. Nick Nurse challenged the call early in the game. I watched about half that game. I need to go Did go you watch, watch uh, it. Um, Norm Powell isolation play in the last play of regulation? No, don't spoil it okay. for me. I'm watching it tomorrow morning. All don't right. spoil it All for right. me. I know who won, but don't spoil it for me. Um, a couple other things. Um, That's Zach Lowe in a nutshell. Don't spoil it for me about uh, well, isolation. Well, I know who play. won, but let me watch okay. the game. Let okay. me go in cold. Okay. Uh you know who has to show up this year, by the way? Can we talk about who has to show up this year? LeBron has to show up more than LeBron's got to show up, obviously. Rich Paul client and LeBron James Ramora fish. Is it a Ramora fish? What is the fish that mooches off the shark? KCP. That's what KCP, 0 for 3 in 27 minutes, 5 fouls. D- do something, my man. Do something. Got to show up. Um, can I, I want to point something out. I think it was within the last three days that Doc Rivers tweaked the Lakers by saying that they they shouldn't count their Minneapolis Lakers. I love it. I okay. love it. That because you're a Celtics background. No, no. I just I like I like like I think they're I think the Clippers are leaning really hard into this rivalry. I agree, and I like it. They had some uh, needling on the scoreboard at the start of the game. I can't remember. Like they had some like in their in their video they were needling. Well, the their whole campaign, the black court. The 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 black tops that they're the black top courts that they're doing around the city, right. the L A R way. Their whole campaign is, you We're can have the you're the Ritz yeah. glitzy team. We're the team of the people. Right. I, they're leaning into the rivalry. Okay. So let me just say this. So so, he Doc to tweak the Lakers, and also as an old Celtic, doesn't think the Minneapolis Lakers years should be counted. But on this court, we have the Clippers celebrating fifty years. A franchise, which means they're taking the Buffalo years. Wow, that's all I have to say. So you're 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 uh, you're pointing out you're I'm calling just pointing hypocrisy. Out some hypocrisy. You're, you're calling as long as hypocrisy. we're talking about what's on the court. TNT tonight was superimposing the shot clock in the uh, free throw circle. You didn't watch the game. You were out. I was live. up. Uh, I was up here. I was sitting right next to the entire Clippers front office, which was delightful. They say sit up on Radio Row with Yeah, I know. Do you like, do you think, I mean, the, do we need the score, the, the shot clock broadcast onto the floor during the game? No, you can see it up there. You can well, see you it know, up there. No, it's the in the score bug, too. That'll be in 10 things I like and don't like within the next month. Do you guys see that the Clippers banner is down immediately? Well, they're, they're, Yeah, the, the Lakers, Lakers banners are already up. Well, the Lakers of, banners have already been revealed again. Most importantly, the Taylor Swift banner has been revealed. Most sold out performances. Taylor Swift. Yeah. Uh, any other last minute takeaways from from this from this game, Wendy? Well, we're going to be talking. We'll talk about it a lot in the next twenty four hours. Um, we're doing this on the court right after the game, so we haven't heard everything that people said afterward. Um, we never overreact to games in October, but pretty good night to be a Clipper, I think. Yeah, I wouldn't overreact, and you see people overreacting already on, on Twitter. Even even players are kind of overreacting. But you know, it was a, t- for the Clippers to look this good without PG is very encouraging, and a lot of it to me comes down to the the role guys that we talked about earlier. Or Harold's more than a role guy, but man, Lou Lou and Montrez are just magic. They should play together forever. Fourteen million dollars they make this year. Hey, look, the Clippers did a that great job. That made it happen. That, I mean, that those guys being 
able to. St- the, the Lakers had to cl- built a, a powerful team, but they had to clear the decks to do it. This the is Clippers really, didn't have to clear the deck. This is really fun. L.A. versus L.A. is really fun. The atmosphere was a lot of fun. It was heated. There were chances. Good back NBA and forth. night tonight. Good NBA night. Two very competitive games. This game didn't. It wasn't the greatest ever played game, but it was a. It was a really well. It was a good competitive game. I want to see this. I want to see competitive NBA this year. Yeah, and this was this was the atmosphere was a lot of fun. All right, well that's it from the floor of Staples Center. Lakers Clippers. We got eighty one left. Please do not overreact too much. Impressive start for the Clippers. Wendy, I will see you tomorrow. Yes. It's going to be a long season, but this was a fun start, and uh, thanks for coming on. Thank you. The Low Post is presented by Goodyear. Discover the possibilities. Goodyear. More driven.